Over the centuries, many artists have tried to depict the crucifixion. I think one of the most dramatic and effective paintings of this scene is What Our Saviour Saw from the Cross by James Tissot. Tissot was a French painter of the Victorian era. He gained a reputation as a painter of Paris high society. He moved to London in 1871 and became famous for his detailed and vivid paintings of fashionable men and women. His art appealed to upper class patrons and Tissot became very wealthy and enjoyed the fruits of his artistic success. However, in 1885, Tissot had a crisis in faith. He had been raised as a Roman Catholic, but had turned his back on Christianity as a young man. Now things changed. From 1885 onwards, he devoted the last 17 years of his life to painting exclusively religious scenes and subjects. He painted his way through the New Testament, but was unable to complete the Old Testament before his death in 1902. He created 350 watercolours of the life of Christ, and these were exhibited in different cities throughout Europe. Invariably, visitors were powerfully affected. Men would involuntarily uncover their heads. Sometimes people wept openly and prostrated themselves on the ground before the paintings. Most artists at the time painted the cross from the perspective of the onlooker looking at the crucifixion as it was taking place. Tiso turned this round completely and he gives us a view from the cross as the Lord Jesus looks down as he's hanging on the cross, what he sees of those who have gathered there to watch. He depicts the different groups of people round about the cross and their different attitudes and responses to the crucifixion. He wants us really to examine our own response and he's reminding us that our attitudes are clearly apparent and visible to the one who hangs on the cross. And so some of the people there are grief stricken, others are indifferent. The Jewish leaders seem mocking and triumphal. The soldiers appear callous. Their attitudes are on display for all to see. Let's look at some of the detail of this remarkable painting. Notice first of all that all you can see of Christ are his feet. And just below his feet there is a woman. It's not his mother, it's Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was a demon-possessed woman who had been delivered by the Lord Jesus. Some suggest that she may have been the woman who wept over Jesus' feet and wiped them dry with her long hair. And so here she is at his feet again. There are five people in this group who stand by the cross of Jesus. And you can see on the left-hand side the disciple John, his hands clenched in grief and anguish. There is a group of three women, and the woman at the front is Mary, the Lord's mother. You can see that she's holding her side, she's got a hand over her heart. And this reminds us of words spoken by Simeon 33 years earlier, a sword will pierce your soul also. She is feeling the heartbreaking pain and anguish of watching her son die in this excruciating way. If you look towards the back of the painting, you'll see there are people passing by. The crucifixion occurred near to a public highway, and there were passers-by who just happened on the scene. This reminds us of the words of Jeremiah the prophet hundreds of years earlier when he wrote, Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Behold and see if there be any sorrow like my sorrow. The religious leaders look satisfied, smug, triumphal. At last, they've got rid of him. And on the right hand side, you can clearly see that they are shouting insults at the Lord Jesus, as indeed they did. But if you look at the middle of the group, you'll see there is one of them looking up fearfully towards the sky. Now, why is that? Well, according to the Bible, just at noon, when the light should have been at its greatest, there came a darkness over the entire scene. And it was in the darkness that God made to meet upon the Lord Jesus the iniquity of us all. The soldiers are uncaring, sitting there having gambled for his clothes. You can see their mockery and callous attitude, but not all of them. Look at the centurion with the red cloak. He is in charge of the execution party and he's looking intently at the sufferer. When it's all over, he will say certainly this was the son of God. Did you notice the animals in the painting? There are a number of donkeys there and particularly the ones closest to the cross. They are the ones whose heads are bowed as Christ dies on the cross. Notice too that it's not 
a green hill far away. The stony outcrop depicted by Tiso looks almost like bleached bones, reminding us that this is Golgotha. This is the place of the skull where death reigns. And if you look right in the middle of the painting, there is a gaping tomb. And so Tiso has depicted the Lord Jesus looking down from the cross, seeing everyone around the cross and their attitudes towards him, and seeing straight ahead the tomb that is waiting to receive his body. He must enter into death in order to provide salvation for all the people round about that cross and for the entire human race. As we reflect on the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, we must ask what is our attitude to his sufferings on the cross? What is our attitude to the sufferer himself? I'm glad that I can say that he died for me on the cross, that the price he paid there has bought my salvation and I have come to know him as my Lord and Saviour. The Apostle Paul said, the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. At this Easter time, I encourage you to think of the death of the Lord Jesus on the cross and remember that he died to provide salvation for us all. If only we will turn to him and accept him by faith. Thank you for watching.